Hello, this is Sanayat Santa. Uh, I am going to deliver you uh, a lecture on mechanical variation. Uh, this is one of an interesting mechanical engineering uh, course in which uh, most of the mechanical aspects are uh, covered. So uh, I'll deliver this lecture every week uh, so that I kindly request you to follow the uh, video lecture of this uh, uh, course. And please uh, give any kind of suggestions or comments on the course whenever you feel uh, good or any kind. So uh, uh, this is the first lecture. Uh, my name is Samayat uh, from Indian Institute of Technology. So uh, let me give you a brief description on this uh, uh, today's lecture. So the presentation outline contains the background of the study of vibration, importance of the study of mechanical vibration, uh, objective of the study of mechanical vibration, some uh, basic definitions of uh, machines or dynamic systems and uh, vibration, advantage and disadvantage of vibration, uh, common uh, cases of vibration, effect of vibration, elementary components of vibration, degree of freedom, what a degree of freedom in vibrating system mean, and what type of coordinate system, the coordinate systems uh, in the study of vibration, fundamental principles that helps the study of vibration. And finally, classification of vibrations are uh, uh, included in this lecture. So the background of uh, the study of vibration. Oh, mechanical design uh, requirements of the uh, present day uh, for space technology for uh, all important technologies recently are very uh, quite complex and they uh, please demand of high order of accuracy on various design fundamental components of the system. So precise dynamic performance evaluations of uh, design, me uh, design mechanical system has become a, a prerequisite for uh, before any action is initiated for their uh, manufacture. So the subject of uh, machine vibrations, which is concerned with the evaluation of dynamics of mechanical system, need methodologies which can successfully deal with emerging situations of the present era. One of the aim of this presentation is to provide elements of steady material to meet these requirements. Special emphasis has been uh, given to modern approach for handling vibration problems of complex system. Importance of mechanical, uh, the study of mechanical vibration. So, importance of the study of vibration is primarily uh, due to their occurrence in different uh, wide variety of situations. Physical phenomena of the nature uh, show cyclic or oscillatory uh, characteristics. So machines and the structures developed undesirable vibration under certain conditions. Vibrations generated intentionally for carrying out certain engineering and uh, other uh, useful uh, tasks. Some uh, simple example of vibrations for different fields are as given. So vibration of the living system that heartbeats are uh, a periodic, which shows uh, uh, a vibration, lung expands and contracts periodically. Uh, Biorhythms of the body functions are also periodic and others also. Oscillatory nature of physical phenomena of the nature, for example, light. So uh, light, sound, molecules, and atoms exhibit vibration at their respective level. Vibrations of the celestial bodies, like Earth also vibrates. And the vibrations of man-made systems, like machine vibration, 
rooted vibration, artificial satellite vibration, structural vibration, and so on. So uh, these are some uh, lists of the... Uh, and the basic objective of the study of this course is uh, because the subject of mechanical vibration is concerned with the study of phenomena of me mechanical systems. So the objective of the study of mechanical vibration is uh, the analysis of dynamic system with a view to provide measure for the control of undesirable vibrations. Devising means for generating vibrations to accomplish prescribed useful engineering tasks. So in some aspects, we consider vibration as a useful phenomena. In some cases, it is uh, undesirable phenomena. So that when we uh, desire it, we devise it for uh, our uh, application, for the means of, and control of undesirable vibrations of mechanical system is of the paramount importance since the, uh, their harm effect can be destructive. And production or maintenance of vibration requires some uh, energy input. For this purpose, any external supply of energy needed, for example, uh, useful engineering process which are based on vibration principle. In case vibration produced as a result of some internal uh, dynamic process of the system itself, then this is uh, possible only when the part of the useful energy system is consumed. The objective of designer is to control vibration when it is object objectionable and the, <clears throat> to enhance the vibration when it is useful. Uh, objectionable vibration in the machine may cause loosening of the parts, just for example, in the nuts and bolt uh, parts which consist of uh, nut and the bolt. It can loosen the nut and the bolt systems. It can loosen even the uh, matting parts of the components. So, uh, and then finally it causes failure of the, the system. Shakers and the founders vibration in testing machines require vibration. Uh, Operations of many instruments uh, depend upon the proper control of vibration characteristics of the device. And the primary objective of our study is to analyze oscillation motion of the dynamic system and the force associated with the system. So the ultimate goal is to determine its effect on the performance and safety of the system under concentration. What is machines? These are some of the machines which are uh, familiarly, uh, which are familiar with, which encounter with vibration. For example, the centrifugal pump uh, is uh, producing vibration. Again, the cylinder and the piston mechanisms, the crank uh, mechanisms of the engine, um, parallel shafts or these gears and uh, shaft mechanisms or gearbox system. Again, washing machines. So this is rotating uh, washing machines on which whenever there is a small eccentric mass or some eccentricity in the system, then it immediately produces vibration. A dynamic system is a combination of matter which uh, possesses uh, mass, um, which possess mass, uh, and whose uh, parts are capable of relative, mo uh, which produces relative motion. All bodies possessing mass and elasticity are uh, capable of vibrating. Okay, so there is energy input or an input of energy. Uh, there is a machines and there is uh, output energy. So from the uh, input to output, there is some losses because of the presence of vibration, because of the presence of friction, because of the presence of many physical aspects, uh, a number of losses are there. 
So that's why the input and the outputs are not exactly equal in uh, any conservative system, uh, in any system. So the mass is inherent of the body and the elasticity is due to the relative motion of the part of the body. So the system may be uh, very simple to complex. It may in the form of a structure or it, it may be a form of machines or it is components or a group of mechanisms. So they oscillate, these mechanisms uh, produce some oscillatory motion, maybe objectionable or necessary for the performing of, uh, for performing of some uh, specific task. So now let's define what is a vibration. So vibration is simply, it is the motion, which is, uh, uh, it can be a to and fro motion, or it can be an oscillatory motion, uh, which is uh, uh, maybe a particle or a body, or uh, which can oscillate about it is a kilogram position. Uh, when oscillation occurs due to the presence of some restoring force, then it is called a vibration. So most vibrations, machines and structures are undesirable due to increased stress and energy use. So uh, some of the uh, uh, inherent phenomena of the vibrations are, it is in everywhere. For example, human body vibrates like air drums, vocal cords, uh, walking and running. So what we are hearing sound due to the presence of the vibration uh, at the eardrum. And what we are hearing sound, what, for example, I'm now providing you a lecture and my sounds are coming out. When I talk, you can hear. So this is the presence of the uh, vibration, the vocal cord. Uh, the walking and running of our legs, that is due to vibration of the muscles. Again, in the vehicles, there is a residual imbalance of gym in the locomotive wheels. Uh, rotating machines like turbines, pumps, fans, uh, reciprocating machines, and so on. And these are also producing vibration. And uh, musical, uh, musical instruments, like uh, many musical instruments, works in the principle of vibration. And the excessive vibration can have a, a detrimental effect, like it produces high noise, which pollutes the uh, environment. Again, loosening of the fastness in the <coughs> mechanical components. Again, tool chatter in the case of um, uh, machine tools, like in the case of uh, lace machine tools, in the case of milling machine tools, it produces chattering. Again, fatigue failure in the uh, cyclic loaded uh, components and discomfort of the passengers when we are uh, moving from place to place in car, using car, or maybe it can be uh, using an airplane. So whenever there is vibration, we feel discomfort. So these all are uh, the result of uh, vibrations. So these are uh, the inherent uh, vibration source. So, so uh, when we are moving in train, we can feel um, vibrations or and show kind. Uh, again, automotive, um, when we are using the manufacturing machines, machineries like uh, milling machines, or it can be the uh, vertical drilling machines, okay? So, these vacuum cleaners may also uh, shakers, okay, uh, to uh, differentiate particle size. We may use shakers. So during this all, we can see uh, vibration. Useful vibration. Vibration can be categorized as harmful and useful. So what are the useful vibrations in our daily life? For example. The shakers and the foundries. People use the sieves or shake, shaking machines and the plasters in the testing machines. 
Okay. Again, uh, vibratory conveyors convey the, to convey material from one place to vibratory conveyors are also used. Vibratory sieving and vibratory uh, tapping machines. Again, vibratory uh, field driving, vibratory forging, okay, vibratory casting machines, vibratory machines, uh, vibratory welds, vibratory heat transfer machines. Okay, so these all are um, again the bulldozers, which uh, again in construction areas also the concrete compactors. Okay, the ultrasonic cleaning bars. Uh, okay, so to uh, in the musical instruments we also use different uh, 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 instruments of uh, music which are work in the principle of vibration. So these are most useful uh, uh, effect of vibration. So vibration concepts are also used in the design and development of various instruments uh, meant for the measurement of dynamic phenomena. Okay, so uh, measuring machines, uh, some uh, are also from vibration uh, background. And what is the, <coughs> sorry, the harmful effect of the vibration? Excessive vibration can cause noise, loosening of parts, tool chatter, fatigue failure, discomfort. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. So, destruction of machines, wear of the uh, gears, gear teams, and ball bearings. Okay. Fatigue in the bearings and shafts. <laughs> okay, causes of uh, machine vibration. There are some common causes for the machine vibration. Okay, for example, uh, the imbalance, misalignment, wear, and the loosen, uh, loosening, uh, loosening of the components are uh, the common effects. So. Uh, the most common cause. So the first one is imbalance. So a heavy spot in the rotary components will uh, cause uh, vibration when the unbalanced weight rotates around the machine's axis. Okay, when there is rotating machines and there is a, a small unbalancing mass on the rotating part, then that produces the uh, the, the, the rotating gun balance. Okay, so uh, which uh, creates a centrifugal force in the system. Imbalance could be, uh, be uh, caused by manufacturing defects. Yeah, most components, uh, especially the rotating shots or uh, some other components manufactured with some. Uh, imperfections or defects on it. Maybe the defect can be void or the defect can be having some excessive mass on the, uh, on the uh, uh, components. So those defects uh, produces that this maybe includes the machining errors or casting flaws or the porosities of the uh, part. <clears throat> Or maintain which man, uh, maintain maintenance issues. Uh, uh, some dirty fan blades, missing balance weights, deformed. These all are the cause of imbalance. So as a machine speed increases, the effect of imbalance become greater, and imbalance can severely reduce the bearing life as well as uh, cause a new machine vibration. So, for example, if we see here a small mass here on the rotating this component, as this uh, rotation omega increase, then it produces high vibration on the system. At the same time, it produces sound and vibration. Here also, this is rotating unbalance, which produces some centrifugal force. Okay. This is. Uh, Axis of rotation, 
And the, due to the presence of these mass, diocese of rotation is shifted to this direction, that is uh, shaft center of the gravity. Okay, shaft mass center is there. So such shifting produces imbalance. Misalignment or shaft runoff. This includes the uh, uh, vibration can result when the machine shafts are out of line. Okay, for example, this is one of the shaft. Uh, this is the shaft axis. This is the second shaft axis. Again, here also we can see. So, uh, what happened? Again, here, uh, angular misalignment also produced. It produced some angle theta. Okay, this is not parallel actually. So, here also, angular misalignment. So, when the axes are parallel, but not exactly aligned. This is known as the parallel misalignment. So here the axes are parallel, but not aligned to uh, the same line of axis. So due to the uh, mismatch of uh, alignment, axis alignment, then it produces parallel misalignment. Okay, misalignment can be caused during assembly or uh, uh, develop over time due to thermal expansion, component shafts or uh, uh, improper reasonably after maintenance. The resulting vibration can be radial or axial in uh, line with the axis of the machine or by the component. So we can have the two basic type of misalignment, which is the uh, coupling misalignment. Another is wear. The wear uh, as a component such as ball or rollers. Look here, this is the cylindrical or uh, roller bearing. We can see here uh, damage on the uh, rollers. Okay, uh, here we can see some ball bearing. Okay, so, and this is the shaft on which the ball uh, bearing works. So in driving belts or uh, gears, in the case of gears, we look here, we have a warm gear system. So between the warm and the warm gear, there will be a wheel, okay? Um, become warm. They might uh, cause vibration. When the roller bearing races become a uh, little, for instance, the bearing rollers will cause vibration uh, each time they travel over the damage area. A gear tooth that is heavily uh, chipped or worn, or a dry belt that is uh, breaking down can also produce vibration. Another is looseness. But vibration that might uh, otherwise go uh, unnoticed can become obvious, uh, obvious and destructive if the component that is uh, vibrating has loosened uh, bearing or is uh, loosely attached to its mount. So this is the looseness not only for the bearing but for the uh, bolt and the nut system. Excessive. Uh, vibration and uh, produces the loosening of bolts and the nets, then uh, that the loosened parts produce high vibration and the noise, uh, that is what we call uh, looseness. Whatever it is caused, looseness can allow any vibration present to cause damage, such as uh, further bearing wheels, wear and fatigue in the uh, equipment mounts and others. Another is centricity. So centricity is um, the offset between the axis of rotation and the axis of symmetry. Okay, so for example, look, this is the uh, shaft uh, axis. The axis of shaft is here. Uh, this is the support bearing, the support bearing. 
inside. Okay. When the shaft is rotating, then it may produce this type of uh, bending or uh, kind of uh, deflection. Okay. So immediately the uh, uh, the distance between the two produces some eccentric trans. Okay, we can check it with the centric transducer. The amount of centricity produced on the rotating shaft with the initial position using uh, the centric uh, uh, transducer. Okay, we can also check it from here to here. Okay, from center to center. Okay, so centric city can be uh, can take place in different types of uh, mechanical elements, such as uh, pulleys and gears and in any relative uh, position between two concentric pieces, such as, uh, for example, uh, the rotor and the stator of the electric motors also. So we can see here eccentricity of pulley. So look, this is the center of uh, main pulley. And this is the center here is for a smaller pulley. So some centricity of the shaft happen here. This can produce also, uh, can be a cause for vibration. Here we can see centricity of the bearing. Look, bearing is centricity. This is exact center and this is centric center. This is centricity in the gear. And this is centricity in the motor armature in the case of uh, this uh, rotor motor and the starter of electric motor. So uh, these are, and uh, these uh, factors may be summarized as uh, the friction between matting parts, the wearing and the tearing of the parts, broken parts, for instance, bearings, etc., are the main source of uh, vibration. Effect of vibration. When vibrating frequency coincide with the natural frequency of the structure, then the phenomena known as resonance. So that resonance happen when there is uh, a coincidence or when the mass uh, structure operates near to the resonance frequency, then there is phenomena always there in the system. So the best example for this is the alien uh, wind-induced or vortex-induced vibration of the uh, Tacoma Narrow Bridge on 7 uh, November 1940 uh, uh, was the best example in, in most cases because uh, that is the uh, disaster which is recorded uh, on the time, which caused it is to uh, resonate resulting in the catastrophic failure. Another is the Millennium Bridge in London, that is the pedestrian and the reaction to lateral motion of the bridge altered their gait and uh, started behaving in the uh, concrete to induce the structure to resonate further and force periodic excitation. So this is the Tacoma Narrow Bridge uh, on uh, USA. So uh, this is at the time where it is resonating, and this is the disaster that happened. Okay. When aircraft wing uh, vibrate excessively, passengers in the aircraft become uncomfortable, and especially when the frequencies of vibration correspond to the natural frequency of the human body and organs. It is well known that the resonant frequency of human intestine tract, uh, approximated at four to eight hertz, uh, should be avoided at all costs when we are designing any components for the human use. So, if the aircraft wing vibrates at large amplitude for an extended period of time, then we will eventually experience a fatigue failure of. Uh, which potentially caused the aircraft to crash, uh, resulting in injuries and the fatalities of human beings. 
So the wing, uh, wing vibration of the uh, this type are usually associated with uh, the wide variety of uh, fluttering uh, phenomena. Okay, so the wings of aircraft will flutter or that deflect at excessive amplitude and then uh, cause the, uh, air, uh, so the structure of aircraft or to, which causes the aircraft to vibrate. Machines with repetitive disturbance for such as engine, motor turbine, it is um, uh, often have a vibrating problem. Okay. Serious vibration problem may cause damage, malfunction, or even failure of the structure or machine itself or machine parts um, and their sleeves. Vibration cause interruption of production in the production lines, like in the manufacturing industries, uh, due to the presence of vibration, some of the machines will be outdated and then the production will line will stop the production and reduce of the working lives of machines. So it uh, reduces the life of machines and also loss of energy and uh, power. So large loss will take place in the uh, input and output line. Vibration calls uh, uncomfort uh, will killing or noise, which can damage human ears permanently. If it is uh, producing a noise, which is beyond the other limit of human ear, ear that is obviously it damages uh, the ear permanently. Okay. Mechanical parameters components, which we use in mechanical vibration. All mechanical system contains three basic uh, components that the spring, damper, and the mass. When each of these uh, uh, internet uh, exposed to a constant force, they react with a constant displacement, a constant velocity, and a constant acceleration. So here what we understand that the three important elements of vibration and the unknown parameters that we must determine or we must find from the vibration analysis. The three elements are the spring, the damper, and the mass elements. And the three and the, the parameters which we uh, require to determine are the displacement u, velocity, u dot and acceleration u dot dot. We can represent it in terms of x, x dot and x dot dot. Okay, so here, this is the uh, a spring system. Whenever uh, push against the relative position, this is the initial position. And when it pushed, it produces some distance d in order to get work done. So the spring with the stiffness K is pushed against to its relative position. Then finally, uh, we can get an equation F is equal to KD. This D is the uh, deformation of the spring. K is the stiffness of the material. And force is the uh, force um, used to push. Another is the velocity. We can represent it in, as uh, d dot. Okay, so this is a damper. This is a representation or a symbol for damper. So when we push um, it against it is uh, initial position, then finally uh, c is the damping constant. Uh, v is the velocity, and finally force is equal to c b. Okay, and then another parameter is the acceleration. That is x dot dot or uh, 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 second derivative of the x or d. We call here, it is represented with d, so it is d dot dot, so which is acceleration. So the acceleration force is given in terms of 
uh, here another parameter uh, mass is given. That is the element of vibration, one of the elements. So mass times acceleration gives us force. So these are uh, the three important uh, parameters and the components. So these are the basic elements. We can use the three basic elements like this. mass. If we represent it in terms of time, okay, for dynamic system can be represented in time base. So mass at time t, stiffness at time t, and the, the uh, damper or the uh, uh, dashboard at time t. Okay, f of t is the excitation force. Okay, x of t is the uh, deformation of the uh, def deflection of the system. Okay, so in simple terms, vibrating system involves the transfers of potential energy to kinetic energy and vice versa. So that is what we call a uh, vibratory system. When there is a mechanism for displacing energy, that is known as damping, then the slash, uh, slashing gradually uh, diminishes. And the main intention of uh, providing damper in the system is to absorb the shock and to reduce the uh, vibration intensity. Whenever we expect, expect the uh, system which uh, uh, operate near to resonance frequency, it needs some means to uh, dump that oscillation or to hold it. And, or, and also finally to eliminate the vibration. So dumping is required. Okay. In general, a vibrating system consists of three basic components, which are uh, given the next slide. So these are the three important elements. Okay, mass is there. Okay. They, uh, that means it is for uh, inertial element, which is a means of storing kinetic energy. Okay. Mass is a means of storing kinetic energy. Another second one is elastic element. That is a means of storing potential energy. Okay. Spring element, we use a spring element. That is a means of storing potential energy. This is a means of storing kinetic energy and dashboard, which is a means to dissipate vibration energy. This helps us to dissipate the vibration energy. Okay. The mass oscillates or vibrates while the spring uh, stores energy temporarily during vibration and the damper consumes or dissipates the energy. This is the principle. Okay, so these are the systems. Okay, elements of vibrating systems. So the mass is assumed to be a rigid body. It excites the vibrating and gain or lose kinetic energy. The spring possesses elasticity and uh, spring force exists if a spring is deformed. The work done in deforming the spring is transformed into potential energy. That is the strain energy stored in the spring. Okay? And the third one is the damper has neither mass nor elasticity. Dumping force exists only if there is a relative motion between the two ends of the damper. The work or energy input to a damper is converted into heat. Okay, so uh, this is uh, what we call it. Now, uh, what are degrees of freedom in vibration analysis? So degree of freedom, we simply represent it uh, with DOF. Uh, which is the minimum number of independent coordinate system to, um, to determine completely the position of all parts of the system at any instant of time defines the degree of freedom of the system. Hence, this degree of freedom is maybe we can represent it in terms of the number of uh, parameters to be determined. So uh, when we say degree of freedom, it is the minimum number of independent coordinates to be determined are referred to as a degree of freedom. 
For example, in the case of a single degree of freedom, we have uh, one unknown constant that should be determined. In the case of two degree of freedom, there must be at least two equations with two unknowns. Okay. So a system with finite number of degree of freedom are called discrete or lamp system. Uh, actually, we have um, a discrete system and continuous system. So, and those with infinite number of degree of freedom are called continuous or distributed systems. Most of the time, continuous systems are approximated as a discrete system and solutions are obtained in a simple manner. That's why we need finite element solution. Those continuous system will be discretized into any number of discrete elements or lamp system in order to simplify the analysis because we cannot uh, identify equations for infinite number of degree of freedom. So in order to solve the given system, we convert the infinite system into finite system by discretizing it into uh, small or some desirable piece of domain. And then we evaluate it in terms of the finite or uh, discrete or uh, lumped uh, system. Anyways, so the degree of freedom in vibration system, in vibrating system includes a single degree of freedom two degree of freedom, multi-degree of freedom. When we know the number of uh, unknowns, we can say multi, that means n unknowns. And then continuous system. So these are uh, uh, degree of freedom. So discrete and the continuous system, here in practical system of structure can be described with finite number of degree of freedom. Then, these are called discrete or lamp parameter system. Large structures, especially with continuous elastic elements, have an infinite number of degree of freedom. These are referred to as continuous or distributed system. For example, here, this is a cantilever beam, okay? So, which is deflected uh, in this manner. But in analysis of this, uh, it is a continuous system. Therefore, we discretized it into n number of sections. It should be in, discretized into n number of sections. For the first section, for example, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, in reference to this point, to this point, we divided it into some n number of sections. So xn are the uh, number of degree of freedoms to be determined in this case. So when we discretize it, then it is a discrete system, not a continuous. So in most cases, for special reasons, continuous systems are approximated as discrete system with sufficient large number of lamp mass spring and the dashboards. This uh, equates to a large number of degree of freedom, which affords better accuracy. So when we are discretizing the system into very large number, then we can get large number of equations and which is complex to solve, but the accuracy from that is high. If we discretize it into a very limited number of elements, the solution is very easy. We can find solution within uh, a hand calculation, and then the accuracy becomes very poor. So that is the only thing. Single degree freedom system. So this is one of a single degree of freedom system. Um, in single of degree, uh, single degree of freedom system, we have one unknowns. Here we represent this uh, the sliding crank mechanism in terms of x, or we have to represent it in terms of theta. 
<coughs> based on the coordinate system that we are using. Okay. Again, we when we come to here, it is a single degree of one mass system. So the uh, x is the parameter that should be determined. And in the case of this, only theta is the parameter that should be determined. So this uh, torsional disk rotates with respect to the axis to some theta angle, then that is the parameter that should be described. Here, uh, these are also a single degree of freedom. Actually, this is corset um, vibration case, and this is free vibration case. Here, there is an excitation, sinusoidal excitation force with constant amplitude F node, which is given. Okay. And this is also a simple pendulum, uh, which is represented in terms of X, either X or uh, theta because it when it rotates uh, swing up and down so um, the conservation of kinetic energy energy conservation principle will work here okay and how we can idealize it we uh, resolve the uh, mass at the position of theta so this is a string the string is assumed to be massless and the unstretchable, okay, Bob is modeled as a point mass. Okay, here is a Bob. This is Bob with mass M, okay, and a string with length L. Okay, so this direction, mg cos theta, resolving the force at this point, and the restoring mass here, mg sine theta, okay. And the mass down here is mg. So the restoring force uh, on the ball is proportional to theta, not to, uh, proportional to sine theta. It is not to theta itself. However, for small theta, for the value very small, sine theta is approximately equal to theta, so that the motion is approximately simple harmonic. Okay. So this is uh, the way how we can describe single degree of freedom system. Uh, this is then the um, two degree of freedom system. Here we can see two mass and we can represent them in terms of X1 and X2. So this is two degree of freedom system. Here we have two inertial masses, J1 and the J2, and the theta one and the theta two. So the relative, displacement between this and this are uh, represented so that this is also two degree of freedom system. Again, when we come to here, we have one degree of freedom system of this uh, pendulum system is there. And there is also additional motion here that the mass which is uh, uh, moving here and uh, uh, through the slot of uh, this, which can display some X. So these are two degree of freedom system. Again here, three mass, which are represented with X1, X2, X3, is a three degree of. So the equations for two degree of system needs two equations, with minimum of two equations are required. Here, minimum of three equations are required for each mass, okay? And here, the torsional uh, system with uh, inertial uh, mass that J1, J2, the moment of inertia, okay? Theta one, theta two, theta three, the rotation of the each mass is there. Again, here we can see, um, three mass, mass one, mass two, mass three, which are uh, uh, represented with x1, x2, x3 relative to each other. So uh, this is also three degree of freedom minimum. It requires a minimum of three equations in order to solve three unknowns, okay? 
So these are the degree of freedom. Okay, Corbin is used in vibration analysis. In Newtonian mechanics, uh, motions are measured relative to an inertial reference frame. That is, a reference frame at rest or moving uniformly uh, uh, relative to an average position of fixed star. And the displacement, velocity, and accelerations are absolute value during this time. Okay. So we have different um, reference frames, but we'll give emphasis for the uh, inertial reference frame in this aspect. For example, uh, inertial reference frame here, uh, non accelerating. <coughs> it obeys the first law, and other laws are also valid, valid in this case. So look, we have X, Y, Z uh, um, frame. And the motion of some particle at some distance here is represented in terms of, uh, ref with respect to this inertial frame of reference, which is X prime, Y prime, Z prime. Okay, so uh, this is the inertial reference frame. Then inertial fr reference frame is characterized by uh, the bodies are accelerating and uh, it do not obey Newton first law and other laws. We can see here, for example, uh, look, this is the earth exactly at the equator in which uh, Greenwich uh, meridians are longitudinal zero and latitudinal zero position. We have inertial frame of reference, which is represented with the red color here. So, which is X, Z, Y. But when we come to here, the rocket, which is in flight, we can see body frame is there, uh, structure frame is there, which are in different position, okay? So this is accelerating uh, frame, okay? This is actually constant frame. This is uh, the Newtonian frame. But uh, the frame here, which we can see, structure frame and the body frame, they are non Newtonian frames. Okay. So, generalized coordinates uh, is the one which we use. So, coordinates necessary to describe the motion of system. Uh, constitute a set of generalized coordinates. For example, uh, x1, x2, x3, or x1, y1, x2, y2, maybe we can use, or we can use theta1, theta2, theta3. So those are the generalized uh, frames. So these are a set of independent coordinates, um, some in number as that of the rating system. For example, the motion of devil pendulum in planar motion can be described uh, completely either by theta one, theta two. This is two degree of freedom system. Look, a simple pendulum consisting of two mass, mass one, mass two. So which can be represented as theta one and theta two here. Or someone can represent the location of this mass in terms of X one, y1 and for mass one x2 y2 so uh, we can use either uh, theta one theta two the rotation of the first and second mass and also x1 y1 x2 y2 the cartesian coordinate though the first and the second links well in the latter case four coordinates are required to represent. That is four coordinates means it is not four degree of freedom, but two degree of freedom. Okay. In the, okay. So these are what we call generalized coordinate systems. Useful principle in the study of vibration. While we are studying vibration, we must follow uh, very useful principles. For example, one, of the principle is the Newton second law principle. So as we know, Newton second law principle is useful in the um, 
uh, uh, analysis of dynamic system. So, uh, a particle acted upon by a force moves so that the force vector is equal to the time rate of change of the linear momentum vector. Okay, so F is equal to MDD. This is uh, uh, this is linear momentum terms, which is equal to uh, M delta uh, change in V over T. That change in V is final velocity minus initial velocity. So force is equal to mass at mass times acceleration is the Newton second law principle. So <clears throat> another work and energy principle is also another important principle in the study of vibration. So the work performed by force in a moving particles of mass n from position R1 to R2 is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So uh, that work is equal to F dot uh, dr, uh, which is equal to half, okay, m uh, r2 square minus uh, half m r1 square. So, which are t2 minus t1, that is kinetic energy. Okay, here t1 and t2 are the kinetic energy in position one and the two. Okay. The next is the D'Alembert's principle also must be obeyed. So it says the vectorial sum of external forces and the inertial forces acting on a moving system is zero. That is called the Lambert principle. That means F plus summation of, uh, that summation of force is equal to zero means F plus minus of MEA is equal to, because this is uh, acting force F, and the uh, inertial force minus Me is there, uh, which is equal to zero for the accelerating body. So this is the D'Alembert's principle. Okay, another uh, generalized principle of the uh, D'Alembert, which is which is given here. Okay, and the virtual work performed by the effective force through infinitesimal virtual displacement delta R I capable with the system constraint is zero. So this is uh, the summation of forces, which is uh, I for N forces starting from I one to N, if I minus MI RI dot dot, this is the acceleration term actually, times the virtual displacement delta RI, which is equal to zero. This is a generalized the Lambert principle. Extended Hamilton's principle is also another important principle which uh, should be included in, or which should be understood in the principle of in the study of vibration. For a system with number of particles, which can conceive of a three n dimensional space with the axis x, i, y, i, z, i, and uh, represent the position of the system of particle in the space and at any time t, the position of representative point P prime with respect to xi of t, y of t, zi of t, where uh, i is equal to one, two, three, two, n, that is um, the number of the So the three n dimensional space is known as the configuration space. Okay, three n dimensional space we call here, it is configuration space. As the time unfolds, the representative point P uh, traces a curve in the configuration space. That is called the true uh, pass. Okay, we can see here the true pass. Okay, this is the true pass. <coughs> okay, so this is P of T is the representative point in the three n dimensional space this is the three n dimensional space okay. and then uh, or the newton pass or the uh, dynamic pass and the another pass here is the virtual pass okay 
This is the virtual past. So how we can uh, find the Hamilton's uh, extended uh, principle? Uh, we uh, extend our work from D'Alembert's principle, that is the summation of force uh, with respect to virtual displacement is equal to zero, uh, which is uh, which gives delta W uh, minus MRI delta RI. So we resolve this component. So this is the acceleration. The acceleration component will be um, uh, expanded. Let, let me expand this part, okay? Uh, when we take four sine delta R, we go this, the virtual work done here, yes, minus M times summation of M uh, R I dot dot. So this term must be expanded. So let's take it as D over DT MR uh, because from M R dot dot, we can represent it like this. Mm -hmm. So which gives us uh, mass times acceleration with virtual displacement plus uh, M R I dot delta R I. Okay, so which is equals to uh, just take this part as it and see this one as uh, delta uh, half MRI, MRI, this is the kinetic energy portion, so which is delta T. So therefore, uh, this, the, this component gives us um, uh, MR dot dot I dot delta RI plus delta T. Now, taking this component is equals to zero, we have this relation. And integrating over time uh, for T1 to T2, uh, here we have T1, T2 is there along this path. Okay, integrating it, uh, we can get finally uh, this relation. Uh, so finally, this is the uh, Hamilton's extended principle which is equal to minus of the, uh, the integral of T1 to T2, uh, summation of I from one to N, MRI, uh, the delta RI dt, which is equal to delta T dt for the kinetic. So which is uh, also uh, shortly represented as delta T plus delta W bar, dt is equal to zero, is the generalized Hamilton principle. The fifth one is Lagrange principle. So uh, the Lagrange principle also uh, uh, must be uh, obeyed in the study of vibration. So uh, we can separate work to conserve and non-conservative uh, parts. In the case of Lagrange, we have uh, an access to include conservative and non-conservative works. So the total work is equal to conservative work plus non-conservative work, uh, the virtual uh, total work. So which is equal to uh, conservative work is the uh, kinetic of kind of the potential energy D, okay, plus the uh, virtual non-conservative work. For conservative system, we have uh, Delta L dt, which is equal to zero. That means L is an operator, which is that Lagrangian operator. And uh, which is L is equal to potential energy minus kinetic energy. No, kinetic minus potential energy, okay? Which is equal to zero. <coughs> For solving problem, it must express the Lagrange in terms of generalized coordinates. So this Q1, Q, to Q3, QNR, generalized coordinates, Q1 dot, Q2 uh, dot, QN dot R, uh, coordinates for the velocity term. So V is equal to V of Q1, Q2, QN. T is equal to T of Q1, Q2, QN. Okay, so the kinetic energy term includes velocity. The potential energy terms do not include 
uh, actually um, velocities, uh, displacement field only. So these are <coughs> generalized coordinates. Similarly, for uh, perturbations, uh, delta t is equal to summation of k from 1 to n, uh, delta t qk, uh, uh, del, uh, okay, so del q, okay, plus the partial derivative of, actually these are not delta, but partial derivative of the kinetic energy with respect to uh, generalized coordinate qk, uh, plus potential energy in terms of the kinetic term, the, the, the velocity terms of the generalized coordinate, delta q. This is a, a Lagrange representation, okay? So uh, these are the Lagrange form. Euler Lagrange representations or principles also are referred. What Euler Lagrange principle states? d over dt, um, partial differentia differentiation of dt with respect to q dot okay, minus dt dq, which is equal to, no, this partial differentiation of dt uh, with respect to qi, which is equal to q uh, plus some uh, terms, nonlinear terms, actually, so which are uh, so QI is easily represented with this relation. Okay, this is the relation for finding Q. So let's take a simple example uh, to illustrate the euler langrange equation to drive the equation of motion. Uh, a bit sliding along the rotating group. So look, this is a bead, bead which is sliding along the rotating group, uh, which rotates uh, angle uh, this. And here, uh, the mass is rotating about O axis with uh, some angle theta. So how the free body diagram of the system will, uh, so this is the free body diagram. So from the center to here, this is the uh, radius of the, um, the radius of the, uh, R is the radius of the uh, rotation. So we resolve the force components here along the tangential direction and the uh, mg, which is acting downward, the height from here to here taken which h is equal to r times one minus cos theta because here angle, angle theta is there. So once we resolve this, uh, the kinetic energy of this system, the kinetic energy half mr square theta dot square plus half mr square uh, omega square sine two theta the potential energy mgh, h is already r times one minus cos theta, so that mgh, uh, mg r times one minus cos theta. And applying the Lagrange equations, the Euler Lagrange d over dt, partial derivative of t with respect to theta uh, dot. So this thing takes only this component, Okay, this component. Again, the partial differentiation between t with respect to theta. t with respect to theta will, this part gets zero, and we have left only this part. So making some sign and the course arrangement of this, we can get this uh, formula. And plus, plus, uh, Yeah, this is plus uh, delta V, that is potential energy, MGH, with respect to theta, one minus cos theta, which gives us MGR sine theta. Okay. So uh, this is the final uh, solution. So then making some uh, rearrangement of terms, okay? Uh, theta dot dot uh, plus, G over R, 
minus uh, this is square cos theta sine theta, which is equal to zero, is the final uh, representation. Now let's see the classification of vibration. Then we will stop uh, today's lecture. So uh, vibration is classified based on different uh, uh, criteria. For example, according to the force uh, external resistance, it is damped or run down. If there is an external resistance on the system, then it is damped. If there is no external resistance, then undamped. According to the motion of the system with respect to its axis. So, based on the axis of uh, it is uh, motion, it is longitudinal, it is transverse or torsional. According to the behavior of vibrating system, that means either linear or nonlinear. And according to the magnitude of actuating force at a given time, it is deterministic or then uh, random and according to the exciting uh, excitation force this is free vibration or forced vibration so let's see the external resistance according to external resistance it is uh, undamped oscillation this oscillation seems like continually going with the same amplitude there is no variation of amplitude in this vibration so this is the maximum amplitude, then it continually going without decay. So uh, this is called undamped oscillation. And when we come to here, the vibration amplitude decreases from time to time, and finally it will decay. <laughs> so the object is still oscillates sensorially. But the amplitude decreases within the envelope of the decaying exponential, so that it is called damped oscillation. Whenever the damping system is uh, provided on the oscillating mechanism, then finally the oscillation will decay. Okay. So this is the meaning. Classification according to the motion of the axis. So, for example, transverse or lateral vibration. This is lateral vibration. The cantilever being vibrate up and down, or the pendulum shoe from A to B, B to C, and like this. So, this is lateral vibration. If we come to here, when we apply load on the axial bar, it will elongate to this direction. So, this is axial. Or here, when uh, vibrated in this direction, then it, it displays from its mean position B 